Dear friends, this is a time of challenge for our church. Whether it's debates over school funding or religious liberty, or the sacraments of confession and matrimony, there's more than a bit of anti-Christian feeling in the air. We recognise with shame that we've brought some of this upon ourselves as a church. There's understandable anger about our failures, and even though we're dealing with these things much better now, in the eyes of some, we are no longer credible or trustworthy. Certainly, we must be humble and repentant, but we should also be clear-sighted about the battles for the soul of our culture in the areas of faith, life and love. There are three issues on my mind at the moment that I'd like you to be aware of. First, there are some who think the civil law should no longer privilege what Catholics and Orthodox Christians confess to God through their priest in the Sacrament of Reconciliation. This is an unwelcome intrusion into the freedom for people to practice their faith unimpeded. A freedom for which many people came to Australia precisely to enjoy. Second, there are discussions about whether doctors should be allowed to kill patients who ask to be killed. No one likes to see someone suffer, especially those they love. But the quick fix of the lethal dose is not an answer. It will in fact make suffering people suffer more and vulnerable people even more vulnerable. And third, we are now in the midst of an official campaign to decide whether we should change the definition of marriage. We might like to think it won't affect us, but it will. Most people who believe in traditional marriage are not bigots, nor are most of them clerics. Saying ministers of religion will be exempt is no consolation to the 99% of believers who are not ministers of religion. If the law is changed, will Catholic parishes, schools, hospitals and welfare agencies still be free to employ lay people who profess our values? Will they still be free to teach what the church teaches about marriage and family? And how about people in business or the workplace? Will they be dragged before tribunals or otherwise bullied into accepting the gender ideology of our age? In short, what we are seeing and reading each day is that there are some in the community who would, if they could, eliminate our sacred hierarchy, overturn our high morality, silence our teachings, defund our schools, close our institutions, even undermine the sacraments of confession and marriage. These are challenging times for the church. They are times that require us to show courage and compassion in equal measure. But if we really care about others, we must stand up for faith, life and love at this crucial time. So pray, discern, act. God bless you always.